gentleman from florida thank you mr speaker i yield five minutes to my friend and colleague the gentleman from texas mr lamson the gentleman from texas is recognized for five minutes i thank the gentleman <clears throat> mr speaker to today is indeed a a, a day for thoughtfulness and courage in this house as we debate the future of our involvement in iraq we must not forget that our troops are engaged in armed conflict a half a world away it is their future and their sacrifice which ne necessitates this debate today now is the time when this hallowed institution must dig deeply within its own conscience and rise above the politics and the platitudes which have plagued us for far too long the American public and our troops demand and expect no less of us, yet no simple solutions face us. Let's look first at the decisions that we have made. We were advised that the conflict in Iraq would require more troops, a longer engagement, and an exit strategy. We did not heed that advice, and now we face an escalating insurgency and civil war. We were told it would cost $50 billion. We were wrong. It's cost more than 380 and climbing fast, and we have not been good stewards of the taxpayers' money, as there has been much corruption and waste in our spending. We were told of imminent success in Afghanistan, and we pulled out our troops in order to provide an earlier surge in Iraq. We were wrong, and we have seen a rise in violence in both countries. We must break this pattern. We can ill afford any further misjudgments. Because it is our obligation in this deliberative body to, del to, to consider every option available. We stand here today to engage in the first substantive discussion of the policies we need to implement in order to succeed in Iraq and bring our troops home. It's abundantly clear that Iraq has been and remains deeply embedded in the conscience of the American people. As this world watches, we must demonstrate from the well of this House that democracy flourishes only when honest and open debate occurs. In this difficult decision, I believe this body has two primary obligations to the American people. One, to fully support our troops with resources they need in order to accomplish the missions they're assigned. And two, to ensure full accountability for the vital resources that we have sent to Iraq. This House has neglected both of these obligations for too long, and it is time for us to exercise our responsibilities on behalf of our troops, the American public, and the world. I stand here today in opposition to, troop, to the proposed troop surge. We all agree that cutting off funding for our troops currently serving in Iraq is an untenable option that will send the wrong message to our partners and our enemies alike. I will never vote to leave our troops stranded. But the question facing us now is, how can we vote to put upwards of 20,000 additional troops in harm's way without adequate resources and without a clear and detailed plan? Because I stand in support of our troops, I cannot support this proposed surge. It's clear that the burden of our nation's current struggle continues to rest with the brave men and women in our armed services. It is no longer fair to our troops to rubber stamp this war. I want them to know that we were deliberative in our decision. I fear this surge will not by itself be sufficient today. It's time for members of both parties to listen to the experts for whose opinion we have asked yet have ignored our military leaders past and present, the bipartisan members of the Iraq study group and soldiers returning from Iraq. It is time for a strategic change in course in Iraq one including diplomacy and education and an honest reconstruction effort. These actions partnered with the actions of the military will show our dedication to improving the lives of all Iraqis and making their nation one of peace, freedom, and democracy. I'm not here today to criticize the president or to engage in partisan grandstanding. This war is not a partisan issue. I have no doubt that one day the actions of our nation will help bring peace and democracy to the Middle East. However, the strategy we are here to debate today remains flawed, and too many questions remain unanswered. While my loyalty to and my confidence in our troops remains steadfast, this Congress and this nation must today seek a new direction. I yield back the balance of my time.